Hi, I'm Jack. I'm a member of the Lakes Region Conservation Corps with the Squam Lakes Association, and I'm here to help you identify and control Japanese knotweed. Japanese knotweed, which is scientifically Fallopia japonica, is a terrestrial invasive species that is found throughout the Squam Lakes watershed, including right here at the Cotton Mountain Trailhead on Route 113 in Holderness. While Japanese knotweed is native throughout Eastern Asia, it was introduced to the U.S. in the late 1800s as an ornamental species. It grew popular due to its ability to grow in almost any type of soil, and that quickly led to the same issue that it faces as an invasive. It will grow in almost any soils, and it will take over almost any community. Japanese knotweed prefers direct sunlight, but it is shade tolerant. It also prefers really moist and wet soils, although it can tolerate dry and sandy soils like the ones here. Japanese knotweed is very easy to identify. As you can see, it will grow in very dense clumps where nothing else stands a chance of getting any sunlight. The stems themselves are hollow, almost reminiscent of bamboo and will form a zigzagging shape as they go back and forth. You can also note the alternating stems, meaning that each time a shoot branches off from the main trunk, it will be on opposite sides of the plant itself. Also take note of the coloring found along the stem, this really brilliant green and purple, as well as the purple hueing at the base of the nodes, or where the stem meets the trunk. Finally, the leaves themselves are a very blatant giveaway, as they are quite large, almost the size of my entire hand, and shaped like a shield or a heart. Eradicating Japanese knotweed once it is established is very challenging, and while there are multiple methods that you can take to help control it, repeated efforts are needed to make substantial progress against it. One popular method you will see is cutting, but this is actually a fairly ineffective process. Cutting only controls the visual impact you have of the plant, but it will recursively grow every year. Another big risk you have with cutting is that the plant spreads through fragmentation, so any fragment of the plant or of a rhizome will actually sprout up a new knotweed patch itself. The most effective active control method is actually digging, where you attempt to remove all of the biomass of the plant. This sounds great in principle, but it is very challenging to accomplish. Japanese knotweed has rhizomes, which are a type of roots, which will grow over 10 feet down into the ground and 20 feet outwards in any direction. Because of this, you have to remove all of the rhizome in order to prevent the knotweed from sprouting back up, a process which is time-consuming, expensive, and again, just really challenging to successfully complete. The most effective method of control for Japanese knotweed is a process called smothering. Before smothering, you want to cut as much of the vegetative life of Japanese knotweed above ground and dig out as much of the rhizome as you can, essentially attempting to remove all of the biomass of the plant. As mentioned before, that typically isn't successful on its own. However, if you then cover the area that was afflicted with a tarp for multiple years, that will prevent any new... Japanese knotweed from sprouting back up, effectively killing it by starving it of any access to light. While this is a time-consuming process, once the initial tarp has been placed, there is very little work you must do outside of making sure that nothing pushes up through the tarp to tear through. Outside of that, after several years, you should be entirely free of Japanese knotweed in that area. When dealing with Japanese knotweed, the usage of herbicides is not recommended. A lot of Japanese knotweed tends to appear along waterways, and herbicides have been noted to have significant harmful impacts on the health and cleanliness of these waterways themselves. Other methods, such as those mentioned earlier, are much more effective and generally much less harmful upon the surrounding environment. Now you can identify Japanese knotweed, discuss and learn from its history, and help with control methods. We do hope you will help prevent and control the spread of invasive species, both in the Squam Lakes watershed and beyond. If you have any questions about Japanese knotweed or any other invasive species, or if you see any growing on properties managed by the Squam Lakes Association, please let us know right away.